Potato. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Good afternoon. It was the crime that rocked Sydney. Mertonay's deadly stabbing rampage terrorising the city and taking the life of Michaela Dunn. Today, justice was served. Nay sentenced to 44 years in jail. Andrew Denny was there on that fateful day in 2019 and was in court today for the sentence. Andrew, a tough day for the victim's family. Well, this certainly has been an extremely emotional day here in court as Mert Nay, the CBD stabber, was sentenced for his horrific crimes. He was brought here to court this morning under high security prison escort, shackled and wearing an orange jumpsuit. His victim's family arrived together and faced him in court for the crimes of murdering Michaela Dunn and wounding Lynn Bow. Nay was sentenced to 44 years jail with a non-parole period of 33 years. It was his plan to confront a young woman in a private and secluded setting for the purpose of murdering her. That is exactly what he did. It was August 2019 when Mert Ney caught a train from Blacktown into the city and arranged to meet Michaela, who was working as an escort. She was alone and vulnerable when he went to her apartment and attacked her with a knife without warning or provocation. This was a cruel, brutal and terrifying attack made for no reason. Then, in a sickening act, he filmed himself posing with her body, sending the video to friends, bragging. I'm a f***ing lying, bro. I actually f***ing did it. Next, he took to the streets, intending to cause maximum fear, chased and eventually brought down by brave members of the public. Stop, 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 stop. Today, those efforts were acknowledged by the court, police and Michaela's family. I'd like to thank the people who stopped a killer in his tracks on the street and showed such bravery and compassion towards their fellow people. It's always going to be a permanently empty spot at our family dinner table and my little one's going to grow up not knowing how funny and kind her auntie was. Police prosecutors had been seeking life without parole but because of his early guilty plea and history of mental health problems the judge decided that wasn't appropriate. Nay showed no emotion throughout the entire court proceedings. He won't be eligible for parole until August 2052. The Premier says she's concerned and distressed about allegations of sexual violence against her stood down minister, Gareth Ward. Live to state political reporter Alex Hart. Hello to you, Alex. Sorry. Will Mr Ward keep his seat in Parliament? Well, at this stage, the answer is yes, Sally. In the absence of any evidence of wrongdoing being made public, Gareth Ward maintains his innocence in the face of revelations that police are investigating him over allegations of sexual violence dating back to 2013. There is, or there seems to be at least, a pretty widely held view in state parliament today that the Kiama MP should be able, uh, should be able to stay in parliament to try to clear his name, given little is known publicly of the details of the claims against him. And the Premier says justice should be allowed to take its course. What transpired yesterday afternoon was extremely concerning and distressing. Uh, Mr Ward has done the right thing in stepping aside from his ministry and also obviously the Liberal Party room. But I spoke to him and asked, I asked him uh, whether he'd done anything wrong. Um, he denied any wrongdoing. I asked him whether the police had contacted him and he said no. Now, there's been no update from police today about the status of their investigation and it's not clear yet if detectives have spoken to Mr Ward. His move to the crossbench means that Gladys Berejiklian will lead a minority government regardless of the result of next week's Upper Hunter by-election to replace Michael Johnson, the disgraced Nationals MP. And in some other developing news out of state parliament this afternoon, it's been revealed that Labor, Labor's shadow disabilities minister... Penny Sharp has formally resigned from the opposition front bench. The one-time interim party leader has no choice but to do what she's done under strict ALP rules after refusing to vote with her Labor colleagues on a, the contentious mandatory disease testing bill in the upper house last night. Now I have further details on this developing story in our full report at six. Sally. All right. Thank you very much, Alex Hart. In more breaking news, dozens of passengers will miss out on the first repatriation flight from India, which took off from Darwin today. More than 40 returning Australians won't be allowed to board after testing positive for COVID-19. We're live to Anna Hay in Darwin. Anna, not a good start after a long-awaited takeoff this afternoon. 
Sally, it certainly isn't. 150 stranded Australians were set to board that flight in India tonight and touch down in Darwin tomorrow morning. But as you said, 40 have now tested positive to coronavirus and won't be able to fly. Also unable to fly will be their 30 close contacts. It means that half the aeroplane will be empty. Now, the flight left Darwin just before 2 o'clock this afternoon. There were no passengers on board the aircraft, but it was loaded with critical medical supplies, including oxygen. The plane will land here in Darwin around 9 tomorrow morning. The expats will then be loaded onto buses before heading to the Howard Springs facility, about 30 kilometres out of town, where they'll begin their two weeks of quarantine. Now, Sally, it's understood those who have missed out this time will remain a priority. There are five other flights after this one. It's hoped they'll be able to come home on them. All right, thank you very much, Anna. Anna Hay there in Darwin for us today. The Israeli military has launched a ground attack against Hamas targets within the Gaza Strip. This is a live shot of Gaza, where Israeli troops have moved in as Palestinian militants continue a barrage of rocket attacks. Our Europe correspondent Sarah Greenolch reports. Well, health officials in Gaza say so far 103 Palestinians have lost their lives, including 27 children, with seven Israelis also killed. There has been a fourth night of cross-border fighting, with neither side showing any signs at all of backing down. Since this all escalated on Monday, Hamas militants have fired more than 1,500 rockets into Israel. Israeli airstrikes have so far hit around 600 military targets in Gaza. On Thursday evening, we also saw three Three rockets fired from Lebanon into the Mediterranean Sea, hitting just off the northern coast of Israel, and authorities in Lebanon say uh, arrests have been made. In addition to all of this, with troops gathering on the Israeli-Gaza border, there is also increasing fears about the potential for a civil war within Israel. In mixed communities where Jewish and Arab residents have been living relatively peacefully side by side, there has been some incredibly violent clashes with extra police and troops troops deployed to try and calm that situation as well. International airlines have suspended and cancelled flights into Tel Aviv. Some planes have also been redirected to other airports in Israel where rockets have landed nearby. We did see the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu out and about congratulating military teams who are running the country's missile defence system. We have also heard from President Joe Biden who says in his opinion there has been no significant overreaction from Israel. The US Secretary of State has offered complete solidarity with Australia as China continues to impose economic sanctions. After a meeting with Foreign Minister Maurice Payne in Washington, Antony Blinken said allies stick together, adding that China's bullying of Australia is harming the US-Beijing relationship. I reiterated that the United States will not leave Australia alone on the field, or maybe I should say alone on the pitch in the face of economic coercion uh, by China. Mr Blinken also backed Australia's call for a more thorough investigation into the origins of coronavirus. Anthony Albanese has promised to build 30,000 social and affordable homes if he wins the next election. The $10 billion plan was the centrepiece of his budget reply speech, one described by the government as vacuous. Rob Scott has more from Canberra. Seen by many as a preview to an election pitch, Anthony Albanese used his speech to lay out his alternative agenda for the country, one heavily influenced by his own upbringing. I grew up in a council house in Camperdown, the only son of a single mum on the disability pension. Promising to create a $10 billion fund to build 30,000 social and affordable homes over five years. 4,000 reserved for women fleeing domestic violence, supporting 21,000 construction jobs and apprentices. It's a fund that will make money, create jobs, build homes and change lives. But the Prime Minister says the maths just doesn't add up. A plan for housing, when you compare it to Home Builder, that will spend four times as much and get two-thirds less houses. Anthony Albanese also committed $100 million to support 10,000 apprenticeships in the clean energy sector, as well as pledging to criminalise wage theft, to take stronger action to repair the broken aged care sector and hit net zero emissions by 2050. 
But there was really only one policy the government was hoping he'd outline. We didn't hear anything from Anthony Albanese about his proposal to back in our stage three of the tax cuts. Finance Minister Simon Birmingham says that lack of detail should sound alarm bells for all Australians. Anthony Albanese brushed off that criticism today, saying he won't be lectured to by a government that has racked up a trillion dollars in debt. Scott there. Amber Laidler joins us now with Sydney's weather. Hello to you, Amber. We've had a bit of an early taste of winter today. We certainly have, Sally. A cold blast has arrived, bringing much cooler temperatures to most of New South Wales. It was a spectacular start to the day at Parish at the sunrise this morning, revealing a fresh dusting of snow on the mountain peaks. Threadbow also welcoming snowfall as temperatures dipped to below zero this morning. More show snow showers are expected over the coming days. So it's shaping up to be a very white weekend for the snowy mountains. This icy blast is thanks to a series of cold fronts that are moving up from Antarctica and pushing across New South Wales. We've seen a few showers and unsettled conditions across the southern states, but New South Wales has remained mostly dry. With these fronts driving strong westerly winds, most parts experienced a very fresh start to the day. Minimum temperatures barely reaching the mid-teens, but the feels like temperatures have been significantly cooler. Right now in the city it's 19 degrees, but it feels more like 11. It's going to be even cooler tomorrow. I'll have your weekend forecast a little later, Sal. Yikes, that's brutal. All right, thanks for that, Amber. See you then. Still to come in Sydney's Afternoon News on 7, Sydney's hidden treasures on show. Is your old junk worth a fortune? How you can find out next. Plus, caught out how not wearing a seatbelt cost a driver $700,000. Ellen's excuse the TV host tells all on calling it quits. And later, banking on business, the Australians making millions, tips and tricks to cash in too. Only Australia's most loved vet can show you this. Going to be amazing. In brand new specials, Dr Harry will bring you the wildest, oh. most lovable creatures from around the world. This is a special moment. Dr Harry's Animal Encounters, Saturday on 7-2. I absolutely love the fact that it has that extra length. Every day you gotta give us some more. The stitching is so good. Oh, oh, oh. $25. The colours, the style, it gets a big tick for me. Score even more at our massive Milwaukee Mayhem event exclusively at Total Tools this Thursday to Saturday. Get up to a thousand bucks to spend on any Milwaukee product. But hurry, must end this Saturday. Total Tools, every tool for every trade, guaranteed. Don't get stuck in pain. Voltaren Emil Gel relieves muscle pain two times faster and reduces inflammation to help get you moving sooner. Voltaren Emil Gel, available with no mess applicator. Searching for a bit of extra value? Wouldn't say no. Good answer. Try Top Toad Exotics from Sportsbet. Get the best payout across all three tabs. Whether it's a Quinella or a Quaddy, you'll get the biggest return with Sportsbet. Hit refresh! Boost your mind and body. Grab an Aussie apple and hit refresh. Apples. What have we got here? Vanish Gold Multi Power. Looks like they're daring me to rewear. Grab an old favourite, just half a scoop, wash and rewear. I wore this favourite when Ollie was born. <laughs> yeah, he loves getting his brekkie all over it. It's not smelling too good and it's looking pretty drab. I'm not sure this is going to work. You know what? Let's give it a crack. The colour is awesome and the stains disappeared. This looks like new and smells great. Vanish Gold Multi Power. Removes stains, brightens colours and removes odours. With vitamins and fibre, fresh Aussie Pink Lady apples are yours for the taking. Just don't take one from the bottom or they'll all come. Apple Now on sale at Aldi. Good. Different.
The first ever Australian Made Week kicks off on the 24th of May and we couldn't be more excited. It's a time to celebrate and support Australia's local makers and growers. When you buy authentic Aussie products with the Australian Made logo, the famous green and gold kangaroo, you're giving back to local industries. It also helps boost our economy, supports local business and creates Aussie jobs. So go on, buy something genuinely Aussie for Australian Made Week because Australia Made makes Australia. Barocca, energy to help keep you on. With three and a half ton towing capacity and trailer sway control, the Isuzu D-Max is born to tow. Watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is the view from Manly this afternoon where it's currently 19 degrees. A driver who was stopped by police for not wearing his seatbelt has been charged after officers found more than $700,000. The 39-year-old was pulled over at Bella Vista last night. There police say they discovered $75,000 hidden under a seat. Another $650,000 was seized during a search warrant at a nearby apartment. Ellen DeGeneres has given two tell-all interviews over the decision to end her daytime talk show. The star was forced to address allegations her workplace environment was toxic. Speaking with Oprah Winfrey and Breakfast TV host Savannah Guthrie, Ellen claimed the recent controversy was orchestrated and coordinated. It was really interesting because I'm a woman and it did feel very misogynistic. Ellen still claims she knew nothing of the toxic culture. Her show will wrap up after 19 seasons next year. Never before seen footage of the great Dame Nellie Melver is offering new insight into The Sopranos' life. And as Georgia Love reports, there's a remarkable story behind its discovery. Dame Nellie Melba was arguably the most famous Australian in history. Now, 90 years after her death, never before seen footage has been released of the opera singer relaxing and playing with her family at her homestead and estate just outside of Melbourne. The footage has been undisturbed for more than 50 years. Historians never even knew it existed until an Adelaide lawyer stumbled upon the rare find while cleaning out his office. The partners that had sort of custody of that box, of course, have, have since passed on. So we have no way of actually reaching back and seeing how they ended up in our offices. The reel was given to the National Film and Sound Archive, which made another jaw-dropping discovery. The canister in which it was found was written on by the dame herself. Now the footage has been released in celebration of what would have been Melba's 160th birthday next week. Part of what makes the footage so special is that the estate on which it was shot still stands today exactly as it was then. Despite living and touring right around the world, Coldstream at the foot of the Yarra Valley was where Melba felt most at home and where she built Coombe Cottage. After her death in 1931, her family, now headed by Melba's great-great-great-granddaughter, has kept the estate in pristine condition. Even the cottage itself a step back in time in some of the most famous shoes of Australian history. One of Central America's most active volcanoes has erupted, sending streams of molten lava oozing down the mountainside in Guatemala. Locals have trekked to the area to watch and pray for an end to the eruption. The volcano is nearly 30 kilometres south of Guatemala City. Coming up in 7's Afternoon News, Powerball Jackpot, one lucky Sydney side, a $30 million richer, so who claimed the prize? Nine lives prove cats always land on their feet. And in sport with Matt Shervington, a pop superstar swimming comeback picks up speed in Sydney. Tonight on 7 News. 44 years behind bars, Sydney stabber Merton A sentenced. Had a pocket $150 cash every week and lost films of Australia's Queen of Song. Hemsworth is a god in an electrifying night. Thor, Saturday on 7. 
What makes Nature's Way Adult Vita Gummies seriously good? Is it because they support daily health and well-being? Or they're a great alternative to swallowing tablets? Or simply the delicious flavour? Choose Nature's Way Adult Vita Gummies. They're seriously good. Searching for a bit of extra value? Wouldn't say no. Good answer. Try Top Toad Exotics from Sportsbet. Get the best payout across all three tabs. Whether it's a Quinella or a Quaddy, you'll get the biggest return with Sportsbet. Score even more at our massive Milwaukee Mayhem event exclusively at Total Tools this Thursday to Saturday. Get up to a thousand bucks to spend on any Milwaukee product. But hurry, must end this Saturday. Total Tools. Every tool for every trade. Guaranteed. Hi, Dad. What time do you call this? Some things don't have to change. With as little as $80,000 super, Seba Super Income Stream works with the pension. Hi, Dad. So you'll still have that steady paycheck. Come on. Even after you retire. Maybe we could find ways to call time out on our kids' busy routines before they get sick. But if they do, Children's Panadol can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. Together, let's rethink care. I think it's time for you to learn the family business. Huh? We help Australians look to save on everything from insurance oh, to oh, energy. Toy. And here is the real brains of the business. The machine that goes bing! Ooh, what did you do, Papa? Um, it goes, uh, bing! Every time someone compares, we compare the market. Oh, look, another one! What? <laughs> We've helped more than six million Australians look for a better deal. Simples! New from Nivea. Naturally good face care. Up to 99% naturally derived ingredients, plus 1% for stability and safety. For hydrated and naturally radiant skin. 100% transparency for 100% trust. Come on, Lola. Quick sticks. Mom. Go on. Kids. Bye. Perfect for rapidly growing families. The all new Hyundai Palisade. Our great tasting chicken menu just got tastier. Get ready for the cheese and bacon McChicken, the fiery cheese and bacon McSpicy, and the mouth watering cheese and bacon chicken deluxe. Now that's too good to keep to yourself. Australia's newest millionaire has been found after winning the entire $30 million Powerball jackpot. The only Division One winner is a woman from Lane Cove who went to bed early last night not knowing she'd won the jackpot. The lucky lady discovered she was $30 million richer over breakfast this morning. A cat in America has put one of its nine lives to the test, jumping from an apartment building to escape a fire. The feline plunged from the fifth floor bouncing when it landed on the ground. After the leap of faith, it casually walked away, proof this black cat is a very lucky omen. It's time for sport now with Matt Shervington and Sherbo Wayne Bennett's in a bit of a feisty mood in Brisbane. Yeah, he's had plenty to say north of the border, Sally, that's for sure. The NRL's magic round kicks off tonight with every team set to play at Brisbane Suncourt Stadium over the next three days. Rabbitoh skipper Adam Reynolds will play at the ground for the first time since agreeing to join the Brisbane Broncos from next year. His coach says it's a shame Reynolds won't stay at Redfern, but it's all part of the NRL business. Well, it doesn't matter who we let go, we would have copped it. He had to look after his future. Uh, the club had to look after what they saw in their best interest going forward. Wayne Bennett says he's currently got no plans or offers to rejoin the Broncos or any other clubs in Queensland. Ash Barty has cruised into the quarterfinals at the Rome Masters. The world number one's top form on clay continued, beating Russian Veronika Kudometova in straight sets. That's Down so a set and a break, Rafael Nadal saved two match points to pull off a remarkable comeback win against Denis Sharpovalov to reach the quarters. Rafael Nadal battles over the line in a Rome thriller. 
World number one Novak Djokovic is also Position through shot. to the final eight. The one of the more fascinating sporting comebacks picked up a gear in Sydney this morning. Pop superstar Cody Simpson swam in the sea final of the 100 metres freestyle at the Sydney Open. He finished six before trying to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics in Butterfly, the trials in Adelaide next month. The junior champion came back for a shot at the Paris 2024 Games. As a musician, you can you know you can tour well into your 80s these days. So, so I know it's um, I wanted to have a crack before I you know spent the rest of my life thinking, what if I what if I had a go? 19-year-old Kaylee McKeon, McEwen, I should say, came third. The fastest 200 metre backstroker in history with a national record of 2 minutes 4 seconds 31. Emma McKeon claimed her third straight win over Kate Campbell in the 100 free. Young gun Xavier Cooks played his first game of NBL this season, but he couldn't lift the Kings to victory over the Brisbane Bullets last night. Sydney dropped out of the top four with seven games before finals after the 93-70 to hammering. There were more chaotic scenes in the UK this morning as Manchester United fans turned out en masse before their Premier League clash with Liverpool to protest against the club's owners after the Super League fiasco. The Reds had to use a decoy bus to get into Old Trafford, but they would have been glad. Liverpool kept their top four hopes alive with a 4-2 win. It's their first win at Old Trafford since 2014. And you won't see many stranger moments in cycling than this at the Giro d'Italia. Oh, he's got another victim and the car has gone straight up the back. Oh, terrible. That is horrendous. Belgian cyclist Peter Seri was accidentally taken out by Aussie Team Bike Exchange car, whose team boss was kicked out of the race. Switzerland's Gino Maida took out stage six and the win. Sally, we'll hear more from Wayne Bennett. He's got plenty to say up there about expansion, where he wants to be and where he wants to coach next year. So he always has lots it. to say. All right, thanks for that, Sherbo. Stay with us. This afternoon's top stories are next. The first repatriation flight from India already in chaos. Nearly half of the passengers won't be able to board. Guilty plea an NRL star admits to a pizza shop assault. Prince's pain, Harry's stunning new claims why it's certain to reignite a royal feud. And a huge reward to solve the mystery of Sydney's missing model, what happened to Ravel Balmain? got good news. What is it? Over five amazing weeks. It's bigger than we thought. Seven Flicks is turning Friday night into Spidey Night. It's hard to believe what's happening. Five Fridays. Five marvellous Spider-Man movies. You do too much. You're not Superman, you know. Five action-packed weeks you won't want to miss. Spidey Friday. Tonight on Seven Flicks. What are you up to? You think I don't know what you're doing? I know. Those spines won't protect you. You're mine. Now, where are your eyes? Aha! Whiskers feed their curiosity. Pain every time you swallow consumes your mind. Swollen, inflamed, sore throat? Try Strepfin. The anti inflammatory formula soothes fast and relieves pain for up to four hours. Try Strepfin for fast, long lasting relief. It's Super Weekend at Maya with 40% off women's fashion by Piper, Bass, Tiquito and more and 15% off the original price of small electrical kitchen appliances. Online now and in store tomorrow. Hurry and Sunday. Maya, my store. On now at Harvey Norman. Get up to a $200 bonus Harvey Norman gift card on LG French Door Fridges. That's right. Update your fridge now to a sleek new French Door Fridge from LG with great deals across the range and receive a bonus Harvey Norman gift card up to $200. Limited time only. Up to a $200 bonus Harvey Norman gift card on LG French Door Fridges. Plus, buy on 60 months interest free and receive an additional bonus gift card up to $500. Now at Harvey Norman. Go! Searching for a bit of extra value? Wouldn't say no. Good answer. Try Top Toad Exotics from Sportsbet. Get the best payout across all three tabs. Whether it's a Quinella or a Quaddy, you'll get the biggest return with Sportsbet. At Nurofen, we know playful kids are happy kids, but sometimes fever gets in the way. Nurofen for children lasts for up to eight hours and can be taken on empty tummies. You do the fun and games, we'll do the fever relief. 
When you choose Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance, you could enjoy up to 15% off your first year's premium when you buy a new policy online. Allianz, behind you for what's ahead. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. To our top story, 40 vulnerable Australians hoping to fly home from India tonight on the first repatriation flight have tested positive to COVID and won't be allowed, allowed to board, rather. The federal government is working to replace their seats with others, but COVID testing requirements will make that very difficult. Chris Ma has more. Well, Sally, as hubs like here at Homebush push along the national vaccination effort, the federal government today began an operation to bring Australians home currently caught in India. Now, a federal government organised flight has left Sydney this morning carrying oxygen equipment, flying to Darwin and then this afternoon departing for Delhi, expected to arrive later tonight. Now, the flight can carry 150 people. Passenger numbers are being confirmed depending on COVID test results. Already, it's understood some 40 book passengers have tested positive, leaving Australian Embassy staff scrambling to find replacements. This is the first um, flight that's had to deal with the increased uh, testing required uh, to return to Australia. The PCR test, which is held while they're in the hotel before they uh, leave for the airport, and secondly, the rapid antigen test, which is generally held uh, just before they get to the airport or at the airport. Now, these are vulnerable Australians, of course, either medically or financially. Meantime, a celebration today at the Homebush Vaccine Hub. It received its 10,000th recipient to get a jab as the vaccine program continues to ramp up. With a new report today urging a roadmap to reopen borders, a survey has shown a majority of Australians don't believe that the world will be COVID-free for at least five years. Sally. Thank you, Chris. The man who went on a city rampage after killing a woman, sparking fears of a terrorist attack, has been sentenced to 44 years behind bars. Merton stabbed 24-year-old Michaela Dunn repeatedly in a CBD apartment in August 2019 and filmed the horrific scene. He then ran through Sydney streets with a knife, stabbing another woman and threatening others until brave bystanders pinned him down. This was a cruel, brutal and terrifying attack made for no reason. I'm not angry because there's no point in being angry, but I'm really, really frustrated. I'm frustrated with the system. There were so many times that could have and should have stopped what happened on the day that Mickey died. Nay's mental health issues were taken into account in sentencing. He'll be eligible for parole in 2052. Israel has denied a ground invasion has begun into the Palestinian territories, but they continue to target Hamas militants as a barrage of rockets continues to pummel the Jewish state. This is a live shot of Gaza after another night of violence. Chief reporter Chris Reason joins me now. Chris, you've been watching the developments closely today. What's the situation at the moment? Well, Sally, Gaza really was braced for a full frontal ground war this morning after Israeli troops began to mass on the border and warnings were sent out to civilian to shelter in bunkers, but while they have kept up enormous pressure on Hamas with non-stop aerial and artillery bombings of Gaza, the IDF, the Israeli Defence Force, issued a statement denying any ground invasion or incursion was underway as Hamas returned fire with an unprecedented onslaught on Israeli targets using their homemade rockets made from nothing more from than the irrigation pipes and fertiliser they find within Gazan territory. Now, for one man, the conflict came a little close while watching the fighting live on TV, suddenly his own apartment block was under attack. But it's not the exchange of missiles that's causing most concerns right now, Sally. We're also seeing street violence spreading to communities of Jews and Arabs in Israel that have normally lived in relative peace. This is a new front in the long conflict and there are fears it is descending into civil war. And despite the calls for peace from the international community this afternoon, there is no end in sight. Here's Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We will continue striking Hamas while defending our citizens. It will take more time, but with great firmness in offence as well as defence, we will achieve our goal of bringing back calm to the state of Israel. Now, at least 109 people have been killed in Gaza, including 27 children. And in Israel, seven reported dead so far. 
as the conflict enters its fifth day. All right, thank you very much, Chris Reason, reporting there. NRL star Dylan Walker has escaped a conviction over a drunken confrontation outside a Northern Beaches pizza restaurant. In a surprise move, he pled guilty today, admitting he assaulted a shop worker. Ashley Hansen reports. The magistrate describes Sea Eagle star Dylan Walker's attack outside this pizza shop as frightening for the victim and witnesses. Today, the 26-year-old pleaded guilty to pushing a pizza shop worker on a drunken night out in November last year. CCTV just moments before the assault shows Walker pacing outside the pizzeria in an agitated state. The manly star had tried to get into a woman's car he didn't know when two workers from Little Italy confronted him. One one of the men was protecting his sister. The court heard the victim tried to organise Walker an alternative lift home before he was pushed in the chest, causing him to step backwards. Just before a two-day trial was set to get underway this morning, Walker pleaded guilty to one count of assault and the second count was dropped. He was then sentenced to an 18-month good behaviour bond and ordered to continue drug and alcohol counselling as well as psychiatric treatment. Life's not easy. You know, a lot of people need help and um, you know going through some experiences in my life that definitely can happen. Today's judgment comes two years after Walker was cleared of domestic violence charges. Despite his guilty plea today, the magistrate recorded no conviction as she believes the father of two's prospects of rehabilitation are significant. A motorbike rider is recovering in hospital after crashing his bike at Eastern Creek. The man suffered suspected shoulder and chest injuries when he came off the racetrack just before lunch. Paramedics treated him and took him to Westmead Hospital. Season collectors and history buffs alike gathered today for the Sydney Fair at Randwick. With a treasure trove of antique gems, the festival is back and in full swing after a hiatus during COVID last year. Paul Caddock was there. Good afternoon, Sally. It's where people can check out what's new in what's old. The Sydney Fair, described as Australia's largest vintage market, bringing together more than 50 exhibitors and tens of thousands of objects, paintings, ceramics, furniture, clothing. It's also where people can come to get their own piece of history appraised, like Linda did today with art expert Lee Capel. I'm a little familiar with this artist was Sebastian Bordeaux. He was um, based in Paris in about 1650. A work like this generally would Conservatively, it would be valued about thirty to $50,000, Australian dollars, um, but over in Europe it could get a lot higher. Experts tell us that antiques, their value and collectability, follows trends like everything else, and it's Art Deco at the moment in a lot of areas that really appeals to the modern eye. Add a known artist and perfect condition, and that's what can make what looks like a regular white vase worth $4,000. It's just style, you just don't need to have a lot of knowledge about ceramics, but it just, it, it calls out to you, you've got to hold it. We're also seeing plenty of toys and even taxidermy, which apparently is becoming popular again. This runs through the weekend here at Royal Randwick Racecourse. Tonight at 6pm, Sally, what makes these handcuffs worth $24,000? And we show you the op shop art buy that's worth 3,000 times what the owner paid. Sally. Thank you, Paul. Well, life is beginning to return to normal in America with the CDC announcing today fully vaccinated people do not need to wear face masks. The US Centre for Disease Control and Prevention also advised those who are fully immunised do not need to physically distance in most places. President Joe Biden embraced the new guidelines emerging at the White House without a mask, calling it a great milestone. Prince Harry has fired another shot at the royal family in an extraordinary interview on a US podcast. The Duke of Sussex criticised Prince Charles's parenting skills, also implicating the Queen and Prince Philip. Ashley Mullaney has more. Well, much like his Oprah interview, nothing was off limits when Prince Harry sat down for this 90-minute podcast, offering a candid look inside his royal life and why he decided to move to California. The Duke of Sussex sat down with actor Dax Shepherd and spoke openly about his inner demons, saying it was his wife Meghan who encouraged him to seek therapy. He says he hopes by sharing his mental health struggles, others will feel less alone. He acknowledges his privileged upbringing, but also likened it to The Truman Show and living in a zoo, offering this assessment of his father Charles. And suddenly I started to piece it all together and go, I know this bit about his life. 
I also know that's connected to his parents. Yeah. So that means that he's treating me the way that he was treated. Exactly. Which means how can I change that for my own kids? And well, here I am. Harry and Meghan called it quits on royal duties and relocated to California to raise their young family. The pair has signed multiple deals to make podcasts and documentaries. Harry telling Shepard he feels like he can walk with his head up and his shoulders down now. My early 20s, I was a case of, like, I just, I don't want this job. Yeah. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. Look what it did to my mum. How am I ever going to you know, settle down and have a wife and a family when I know that it's going to happen again? Yeah. Because I know, I've seen behind the curtain. I've seen the business model. I know how this operation runs and how it works. Yeah. I don't want to be part of this. While he awaits the birth of his second child, a baby girl, it's unlikely this will be the last we hear from Harry. He's also been working on a new program with Oprah titled The Me You Can't See, expected to be released in coming days. Thank you, Ash. Still to come in 7's 4pm news, a look at how the share market ended the week. Plus the mystery of Sydney's missing model, the huge reward on offer to help find Ravel Balmain. Road trip, why this plane is on the move. And it's 10 degrees in Katoomba. Amber has the forecast soon. <laughs> this is awesome. The grand vision of biblical proportions <laughs> to transform this into a family home. This is something pretty cool. Not only spectacular, but practical as well. On new, better homes, tonight on 7. If you live for the thrill of the chase, if being outdoors makes your heart race, whether you're conquering the finish line or just rolling around in the sunshine, new OMO triple capsules have got your laundry covered. Throw one in hot or cold for a clean like no other. It dissolves to erase stains that put up a fight, leaving a fresh fragrance and whites that are bright. So just pop one in the drum. Laundry easily done. Omo Triple Capsules. Laundry made easy. Always keep away from children. Don't tell Grandad, but he was right. I've overcooked these steaks. <laughs> I'm always right, son. I thought you'd know that by now. Dad, how on earth did you hear that? Have you heard of Amplifon? At Amplifon, the hearing care professionals experience our latest technology hearing aids with a free trial, including the new Ampli Mini. So small, it's almost invisible. Call 13 My Ears to book an appointment and experience a free trial in the comfort of your own home. That's 13 69 32 double seven. Amplifon, the hearing care professionals. Those men that came for your father. Did you see their faces? That's them. Run! I'm worried about what he might know. You really want to die for this kid? I promise you, I'll get us out of this. Take a deep breath, hold it, and lay back. <gasps> Those who wish me dead, in cinemas now. At Terry White Chemmart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chemmart. Now that's real chemistry. When you choose Allianz Home Insurance, you could join others who received up to 30% no claim bonus depending on your claims history. Allianz, behind you for what's ahead. Should have gone to Specsavers. Get $150 off multifocals. Get well sooner with Blackmore's BioC. This is everything we've been waiting for. Here they come. The AFL is here on Saturday. It just gets better. Every blockbuster clash, every Swans game, every Giants game, and it's all right here on 7, live and free and in HD. This has been an absolute special. 7, your home of AFL. One of Sydney's highest profile missing persons cases is back in the spotlight. Police today announced a $1 million reward for information on Sydney model Ravel Balmain, who disappeared 26 years ago. Cameron Price has the details. 
Sally, good afternoon. Police say they are reopening this investigation and offering a $1 million reward to help solve the disappearance and suspected murder of Ravel Balmain, who was last seen in Kingsford in November 1994. The 22-year-old, who was working as an escort at the time, told friends it was her last day on the job before starting an overseas modelling career. Her final client, Gavin Owen Samer, who was named as a suspect at a coronial inquiry, today confirmed by police as a person of interest. We're looking at all persons that were involved in the investigation from the beginning to now, and they'll be all looked at, looked at again. It is not too late to clear your conscience. It's not too late uh, to assist police and of course benefit from this reward. For Ravel's family, 26 years on, they just want answers. She was young, she was 22, she was beautiful, she was working, she was happy, um, she was talented, um, she had everything going for her. Police say new methods of DNA testing of evidence not available at the time of her disappearance will be used to help in the investigation and they're urging anyone with information to come forward. Sally? Thank you, Cam. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News live across Sydney. Still to come, the Aussie entrepreneurs making millions of simple ideas. It's easier than you think. Coming up in a few minutes, how to cash in on the business boom. The time to check finance now with Stephen Daglian at Comsec this afternoon. Hello to you, Stephen. It was an encouraging end to a rocky week for investors. A happy Friday, Sally. Exactly right. Look, the Aussie market rose by just shy of half a percent today, which doesn't sound like much. It's not quite enough to push us higher for the week, but the good news is at least we've avoided a fourth straight day of losses, which is great because otherwise it would have been the longest losing streak in about seven months for Aussie shares. Today there were gains across most areas of the market, but some of the losers included mining companies like BHP, Rio and Fortescue. Mind you, they've actually done quite nicely over the course of the month so far because iron ore prices have been hovering around record highs uh, over the week. Zero, the accounting software group, also also down about 4%. It's had a difficult couple of days despite some bigger profit results. And some of the best included CBA, which hit a record high. The Aussie dollar, 77.3 US alley. All right, thank you very much. Stephen Daglian at Comsec this afternoon. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Michael Usher and Angela Cox. Hello to you, Michael. What are you working on in the newsroom? Hello there, Sally. Sydney stabber Merton has been jailed for 44 years over his 2019 murderous rampage in the CBD. So when will he be eligible to walk free? Plus emotional reaction outside court as the victim's family speaks. A COVID scare throws the government's plan to lift the India travel ban into doubt. Dozens of infected Australians turned away from the first repatriation flight. The latest on the State Parliament House sex scandal. New details on allegations of sexual violence against a senior minister. Hear the Premier's full response. How a new tool can help you pocket $5,000 extra cash and slash your credit card debt. We'll have more on that incredible collection of weird and wonderful antiques. How much this pair of designer handcuffs are set to fetch at the Sydney Fair and the Sydney suburbs ditching Facebook, but finding a new way to stay in touch. Uh, Sal, a lot in there. We'll have that for you. Mm -hmm. Plenty more, of course, coming up in Sydney 7 News, 6 o'clock. You never know when you need designer handcuffs. <laughs> All right, thanks. That's really? You there. Okay. <laughs> Well, a retired Boeing 737 has gone on a road trip. The huge fuselage was transported on the back of a truck from Perth Airport to its new home west of the city. Its wings and tail were moved separately to make it easier to navigate along the highway. The plane will get a new lease on of life as a tourist attraction at a WA air park. Just ahead, the tips to make it big in business, but first a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Vitable Vitamins Traffic Chopper. We've got shocking delays for the M5 through Hammondville in both directions from multiple accidents. The eastbound one has cleared and this is the westbound one in the breakdown lane and the right-hand lane, as you can see, extensive delays back into Kingsgrove and citybound traffic onto the Hume Motorway. Vitable takes the guesswork out of vitamins. Take the online quiz and get your tailored vitamin recommendation at vitable.com.au. Use code vitamin50 for 50% off your first order. From sugar-free soda to active wear with a twist, everyday Australians are taking simple ideas and making millions. As Sean White explains, a good business plan and family support can be the foundation for success. Julie and Michael Pillen are a mother and son duo and they have the recipe for success in their sugar-free soft drink line, Famous Soda Co. We believe at the bottom of our hearts we could produce something that sorry, wasn't currently in the market from a flavour or a brand 
perspective. Like a lot of parents, Michael's mum, Julie, never liked her son having sugary drinks. They turned that into a business that's landed them a $4 million deal with Coles and Woolworths. So from this time last year, we're up nearly 350%. And they're not done yet. In the coming weeks, we're about to launch our sugar-free, all-natural confectionery company called Famous Candy Co. Um, we're going to be hitting the market in sugar-free or natural snakes, sugar-free or natural pink frogs and sugar-free or natural soda bottles. Well, just like the Pillins, Nathaniel Anthony found success working with his family too. He's the founder of Muscle Nation in Brisbane, one of Australia's fastest growing activewear and supplement brands available online. I was always into social media. Um, I was always trying to sell stuff online, on eBay, that kind of thing. And then me and my partner Chris kind of saw a gap in the market. Um, where there was a lot of brands selling products, but no people were selling a community. Well, Muscle Nation stays in touch with its customers through a private social media page and messenger chats. And it's working because the business, which started from a family bedroom, is now expecting a $50 million turnover at the end of this financial year. If you would have told me this 10 years ago that he would have been so successful in his business, I wouldn't have believed it. Well, if you're looking to start a new business, the advice is to have a plan, assess your finances, check your legal obligations and devise a marketing scheme. The trick to a successful new business is having a product or service that stands out from an often saturated market. And that's exactly what Tim Fung did when he launched Sydney-based business Airtasker. It's an app that matches people who need help with a task to those who can do it for a negotiated price. We sort of realised, why do we ask friends and family to do all these kinds of jobs when there's so many people out there who would love to make a living? Airtasker is valued at $255 million. What started as a small idea now earning big bucks. Sean White, 7 News. Next in 7's Afternoon News, Amber Laidler is back with your latest forecast. One of the best known faces on Australian stages and screen. Craig McLaughlin's charges of assault. Do you believe your accusers are lying? I was public enemy number one. I'm sitting here today 100% acquitted. I'm an innocent man. We have a lot to say. He's been abandoned by everybody. How am I going to survive this? I can't win. It didn't happen. No one's heard my side of the story. just have to say no. So when you say yes, it means a lot. Kinder Chocolate comes in little bars with lots of taste, so it's perfect for saying yes to at treat time. Kinder Chocolate, a little means a lot. Terry Shear, Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist, provides the cover you need for your property and rental income. As a first time investor, Terry Shear provides the security I need. Call Terry Shear or go online. Make the Daily Telegraph just for you. Use the new My News function on our website and follow what you love to customise your own news feed. Subscribe now for full digital access for a dollar a week for the first 12 weeks. Search Daily Telegraph offer. When frequent heartburn kept waking me up at night, enough was enough. So I tried Nexium 24 Hour. Unlike antacids that often require multiple doses per day, Nexium 24 Hour is better. Just one tablet a day can provide 24 hour protection. Live life less interrupted. Don't blink or you'll miss it. The Snooze Flash Sale is now on. Half price on selected mattresses and half price on selected bed frames. Hurry, the Snooze Flash Sale is on for 72 hours only. Sale must end Sunday. Tis and C's apply. What a little snooze can do. Can you bring the glasses? Oh, it's annoying. They're still wet. To help avoid that, just add Finish Rinse Aid. It speeds up drying for drier and shinier dishes. Try Finish Rinse Aid today. Australia, meet your new McCafe blend. Roasted and blended in Melbourne. Smoother, richer, and crafted for Aussies who love great coffee. The new McCafe blend. Now that's coffee fit for an Aussie. Ben and Jerry's Topped. Discover delicious chocolatey fudge topping, then dig in to uncover even more with swirls of salted caramel and chocolate fudge brownies. Ben and Jerry's Topped. Layered with goodness from topped to bottom. 
divided we fall, united we stand. Together, they think they're strong enough to win. A full deck is always a challenge for a chaser. They know a lot of stuff. But this chaser loves a challenge. Bring it on. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. Facebook abandoned the Sydney suburbs where it's been given the flick. Know how these neighbours found a new way to stay in touch on 7 News at 6. Is back now with the weather. Hello again, Amber. How's it looking for the weekend? Sally, even colder than today, if you can believe it, with the icy blast settling in for the next couple of days. In the city today, it reached a top of 20.3 degrees, although it felt several degrees cooler. That followed an overnight low of 13.2 just before 7am. This slow-moving trough has continued weakening as it crossed the state today, but another cold front is approaching. It should impact New South Wales tomorrow, bringing even colder cooler temperatures and strong westerly winds. We're also expecting more unsettled conditions for the southern states. A severe weather warning for damaging winds has been issued for southern parts of Victoria. So showers for Melbourne tomorrow, a possible thunderstorm 13 the top, a very chilly 11 degrees in Hobart, cloudy and 17 in Adelaide, cloudy also in Perth, but a sunny day ahead for Darwin and Brisbane, 24 the top there tomorrow. Temperatures will reach a cool 18 degrees in the city tomorrow under mostly clear skies, dipping to just 10 overnight. It's also looking very windy tomorrow. Gale warnings are in place, stretching from the Hunter to the Eden Coast. A strong warning has also been issued further north for Coffs and Macquarie Coast. That warning also for Sydney's enclosed waters. Looking ahead now, 17 degrees the top in the west tomorrow, dipping to just 5 degrees there on Sunday. It should get a touch warmer by midweek, but plenty of single-digit minimum temperatures, so some very cool nights ahead. Rug up this weekend, Sally. We'll have more details at 6. All right, thanks for that, Amber. And that is Sydney's 4pm News for this Friday. Angela Cox and Michael Usher will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Sally Barry. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.